We're here in Palmerston North, the end of a massive day, the biggest day I can remember on Targa. Running into Wangamomana, not so many dramas, but on the way out, the local camp mother, aka Richard, he tried to join the race, but there was nowhere for his co-driver. Yeah. Marcus Van Kling did have a co-driver, but didn't help him this time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, I, I just came to the corner, I wanted it, and I think it just went just straight off the line. Just, just spun up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's damage? Nah. Oh, no, that's broken. Though. Oh, no, it does something to the rim. That's not, no, nothing, mate. Canadian Kelly Silverthorne paid the price of having to drive off the key after the accelerator jammed on full war. Dan Gurney or Jim Clark, I think, won a race that way on the key. Like a Daytona, a Daytona Enduro. And Andre Cowan rolled out of Target in spectacular fashion. The road was a little bit damp and a bit greasy and uh, the rear just uh, started slipping out and uh, just went off the road here and um, clipped the bank and sent it over um, once or twice. Um, so we rolled it once or twice and then landed back on the wheels. Uh, driver and co-driver okay, yeah we're both fine but uh, the car's definitely not. In the final stage tonight it was teeming with rain, very tricky. Jason Easton in a treacherous last stage this evening. He's had a mechanical failure which has put him off the road and threw a power pole, power lines down off the road. Thankfully they were alright though. Come into this corner here and hit the brakes and the speech, front to speech and broke and we were just a passenger. Also on the last stage, Ashton Wood has come off, there was some gravel all over the road and a little bit of late call has seen him not quite make the corner. We've been quite conservative all day, a bit going along briskly but this patch just caught us unawares and I couldn't get it quick enough so we went round to the left quickly and then it swung and went round to the right. And our regular Japanese visitor, Masao Taki, he's gone off into a bank. Second corner down, we uh, hit some fresh sheep shit on the road and uh, got into a, a situation and then he couldn't like, get it back and end up with a tank slapper on. On a positive note, in modern two-wheel drive, Steve Kirk Fernandez oh. second to Martin Dippy. Martin Dippy's put a new gearbox in the car for this event. It's taken a few days to get used to it, but man, the times he's been able to do today are truly impressive and what are sketchy conditions. Last night we thought it was the Holden Commodore leading, but it's been such a topsy-turvy battle all week. We, it was actually Mark Kirk Van Ann. He was leading Classic, but unfortunately, he's thrown a rod outside of that BMW engine, and he's going no further. It's Bevan Claridge that leads in the mighty Commodore. Australian Keith Callanan in that fantastic sounding BDA Escort, he holds second place tonight. In the Andrew Sims four-wheel drive class, we've still managed to hold onto our lead today, which I'm pretty happy about. Tony Quinn, I think he's having a few car problems or diff problems, and maybe going into rear-wheel drive on a slippery road. A GTR rear-wheel drive is not the type of thing you want to have, but third still is Brian Green. Magic time in the really slippery stuff this afternoon. He actually, they changed an engine overnight, and he didn't realise that the electronic centre diff wasn't turned on all day, so turned it on the last stage and he put in a blinder. Well, it's certainly been raining a lot this afternoon, but we're hoping for some fine weather tomorrow, get those dry roads nice and dry, go fast and head to the Hawke's Bay.